Uh, thanks, Dr. McNeely. Good morning, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm an R3 here. And uh, I'd like to talk to you guys about uh, management of small renal masses, uh, focusing on uh, cryo, RFA, and in the end, comparing them to uh, partial nephrectomy. So my objectives for this uh, morning's talk, review all the uh, minimally invasive uh, treatment options for small renal masses, including some of the lesser known ones, a quick brief review of those. Review the literature of RFA, review the literature of cryo, compare these to the uh, partial nephrectomy, focusing on laparoscopic partial nephrectomy. And in the end, review the treatment algorithm, uh, a suggested treatment algorithm for uh, small renal masses. A uh, quick uh, few slides about the epidemiology. Renal cancer represents 3% of, of all cancers. It's the third most common cancer of the urinary tract, prostate, bladder, kidney. In 2010, there were uh, 4,800 new cases of renal cancer and uh, 1,650 deaths attributed to it. Uh, we all know that the um, uh, incidence of these small renal masses is rising. This in part is due to the widespread uh, use of abdominal imaging. Uh, there's, there's been reports that uh, the detection of RCC, um, the rates have been rising steadily over the past three decades at some uh, saying 2 to 3 percent per year. Despite increasing cancer rates, mortality rates have declined and five-year survival rates have improved. Promising. Then, uh, in 2009, there was new TNM stagings proposed. Uh, this morning, I'm going to focus on the T1 uh, tumors, less than seven centimeters, lim uh, limited to the kidney, and uh, focusing on the T1A uh, tumor, small renal mass is less than four centimeters. <clears throat> a quick case to uh, uh, spark the interest. A 68-year-old male had a 2.7 centimeter incidental renal mass found on the lower pole of his right kidney. Past medical history uh, is consistent with hypertension, some cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and hyperlipidemia. He had a cabbage in 2006. On physical exam, uh, BMI 30, normal abdo exam, kidneys non palpable. Investigations, uh, normal hemoglobin, his creatinine was slightly increased with GFR 41, and uh, here's the CT of the abdomen and pelvis, revealing an exophytic uh, mass off the lower pole of the right kidney. So, next step in management of this. Um, uh, one, uh, active, active surveillance is an option. Two, uh, partial nephrectomy. Three, cryoablation. Four, RFA. And for comparison's sake and to help our memory, I thought I'd compare these um, uh, with a few analogies that we might be familiar with. Active surveillance being the trauma maple police. Partial nephrectomy being the Edmonton Oilers proven champions. Uh, cryoablation being the Canucks, shown some promise but really don't have it in the end. And RFA, uh, the Flames. So focusing on uh, minimally invasive treatments, um, there's quite a few out there. I'm going to uh, pay most of the attention on the RFA and the cryo, but just introduce briefly HIFU, uh, radio surgery, talk a little bit about microwave thermal therapy, and um, there's two others, laser interstitial uh, thermal therapy and pulsed cavitational therapy, which have very little uh, literature, uh, so I won't be touching on them. So patient selection, ideal characteristics uh, for these minimally invasive procedures. Uh, the, the patient factors wise, it's usually a patient with multiple medical comorbidities, usually elderly. Um, there's a focus on treating these, uh, solitary, patients with solitary kidneys. Uh, those with impaired renal function and possibly a hereditary disease. Tumor factor wise, they're usually uh, less than five centimeters, anatomically accessible. And uh, uh, although endophytic masses are, are being well treated these days, uh, exophytic masses are 
uh, easier to treat with these pro, uh, probe uh, treatments. Uh, so RFA, it's uh, a high frequency electrical current. Uh, these masses are uh, uh, bladed with temperatures between 50 and 100 uh, degrees Celsius. Tissue disruption is through coagulative necrosis, uh, fibrosis, and thermally induced vascular thrombosis. There's a, a blade of zone one centimeter beyond the tumor margin. Um, there's either impeded, impedance sim, uh, systems or temperature systems that are used to monitor the tumor, tumor ablation. A few images uh, uh, demonstrating uh, the probe uh, that's used for RFA um, inserted uh, into the kidney. Uh, it's single probe and the uh, bottom picture can appreciate the uh, trying to demonstrate the uh, thermal ablative uh, zone uh, one centimeter around the mass treated. So RFA technique, uh, most commonly it's done percutaneously. Obviously posterior and lateral tumors are easiest for the percutaneous uh, treatments. It's done under conscious sedation and local anesthetic. Uh, one of the downsides, it uh, can't be monitored in real time when you're comparing it to cryo. Uh, therefore pre-op imaging and planning are very precise. Um, it's an uh, outpatient procedure. The patient shows up in the morning and is home at dinner time. A technique, it's a single probe. Uh, usually CT guided uh, for, a, uh, for a, a mass that's less than two centimeters. They, uh, there's a cookbook um, that says uh, you, you uh, heat it for five minutes, uh, two to three centimeters, seven minutes. And the larger masses uh, have to uh, be ablated for eight minutes. Uh, a post contrast CT scan um, is, done to, uh, is done to ensure ablation. Um, there's been a few uh, follow-up uh, uh, recommendations made, the latest one by Tracy in uh, 2010, uh, just saying the, the regular history chest x-ray and uh, blood work at six weeks and six months, and most importantly the abdominal imaging, uh, they suggest at uh, six weeks, uh, at six months and then yearly. With regards to the follow-up imaging, um, uh, loss of enhancement uh, unfortunately doesn't always equal uh, success. Um, there's been many reports that uh, with RFA there's uh, no uh, change in the actual size of the uh, treated mass. Um, there has been a, a documentation of uh, a halo sign present in, in about 75% of these cases treated. This represents uh, some of the macroscopic fat around the tumor and, almost, and uh, a peritumor um, scar surrounding it. With regards to the follow-up, and um, there has been uh, demonstrated some conflicting results. Um, uh, there has been there was a study uh, by Raymond in two thousand and eight, uh, which revealed uh, all that took all the masses that did not enhance and biopsied them, and one hundred percent of these, uh, the biopsy was negative for tumor. Um, uh, Wei Tao in two thousand and seven. Um, showed 17% uh, of the masses they treated, they treated 120 masses, uh, still stain H&E positive for viable uh, RCC um, six months post ablation, even though the CT scan was non-enhancing. Uh, and with RFA, um, there's an entity uh, called skip lesions, uh, which are a concern. Uh, so uh, parts of the tumor being treated um, and parts of the tumor uh, not being treated with the probe ablation. With regards to uh, uh, complications, uh, throughout the literature there's been rates uh, reported between 0.3% and 8.2%. Uh, the major um, complications include uh, ureteral obstruction, uh, collecting system injuries, uh, bowel injuries, and uh, bleeding. Uh, minor ones are obviously more common, uh, paresthesias, pain at the port at the uh, probe site, hematuria is very common, and also the uh, pneumonia, as well as uh, mild perinephric hematomas. Uh, this uh, 
paper by Kadeidu and his group from UT Southwestern um, shows the longest follow-up uh, that we have with uh, RFA treating masses, um, uh, 7.5 years. Uh, shows uh, recurrence-free survival of uh, 93% for RFA-treated small renal masses. Overall survival, 85%. Now, um, there are 200, they followed 243 masses. Seven of these uh, were incompletely uh, ablated and required reablation. Uh, only five of the, those seven reablations um, succeeded. Uh, when you're when you're thinking about these uh, minimally invasive procedures, a lot of times they're done for preserving renal function, whether it's in uh, poor kidneys or solitary kidneys. Um, uh, reports have demonstrated that uh, um, the kidney function uh, does not is not altered uh, severely when treating these. Um, uh, Pateus and his group uh, looked at uh, uh, 64 masses and followed the GFRs. Uh, from baseline to a month, comparing them on to a year, and there was no significant change. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to touch on uh, uh, cryoablation. The uh, mechanism of, uh, of cell death in cryoablation is uh, uh, threefold. Um, the initial damage is from hypertonic intracellular milieu, uh, giving you pH changes and protein denaturation. Uh, extracellular ice formation uh, uh, lends itself to mechanical disruption of the cell membrane. And uh, lastly, a delayed tissue injury um, is accomplished due to microvascular injury and delayed apoptosis. Uh, CT uh, uh, scans of a, uh, a lateral tumor uh, being uh, infiltrated with a cryoablative probe. And uh, uh, just a quick look at what's going on. Probe inside kidney, ins inside tumor, inside kidney, and the uh, uh, cryoablation zone surrounding uh, the tumor itself. <clears throat> so touching on technique of cryo, it can be, it's done uh, lap or percutaneous. Uh, laparoscopic advantages um, allow for precise monitoring. Uh, decreased risk of injury to adjacent organs, and the ability to visualize and treat uh, potential bleeds. Uh, percutaneously, these are most commonly done CT guided, uh, anywhere from one to, fo to five uh, probes are used, depending on the size of the mass. That's done under conscious sedation and local anesthetic. Uh, today there's a a minimum of two freeze uh, thaw cycles uh, performed. Um, the freezing is performed with argon and the thawing out is with helium. Uh, a quick depiction of the uh, uh, cryoblade of probe and the temperatures uh, surrounding it. Uh, minus 20 degrees uh, Celsius is uh, uh, lethal temperatures uh, for the kidney. Um, and uh, it's uh, the center of the probe um, gets to minus 160. Uh, the CT, the, uh, the ablative therapies are done under real time with the CT scan. Um, you're with this, you're able to visualize the ice ball and ensure it encompasses the, the tumor entirely. Uh, follow up for these masses. Um, the CT scans routinely perform day one and uh, at three and six months, and then yearly. Uh, one of the nice things about cryoablation is uh, with the follow-up, you're able to visualize the decrease in size uh, over time. Uh, uh, Goaznu and his group in 2010 uh, uh, demonstrated um, the reduction in size in, uh, of the masses they treated. Uh, with, with six years uh, uh, follow-up, uh, they were they had uh, 34 masses that they were able to visualize and uh, notice the decrease in reduction of size. This is a quick depiction of uh, a mass that was treated uh, lower pole left side, um, originally uh, three centimeters, monitoring its uh, changes and decrease in size um, over time. 
regards to complications, um, um, uh, multiple uh, reviews have been done revealing major and minor uh, complications. Um, again, ureteral obstruction uh, has been uh, described in this uh, multi-institutional review. Uh, there was no reports of it. Uh, collection system injury, uh, bowel injury uh, is uh, possible and uh, bleeding also. Um, uh, it's unique to the uh, cryoblative therapies, there's a fracture of the tumor itself. Um, uh, minor complications including pain, hematuria, pneumonia, and uh, hematoma are also described in common. Uh, looking at um, uh, the, the two forms of treatment of cryoablation laparoscopically or percutaneously, um, the complications uh, specific to those. Um, the group at uh, Fox Chase looked at 195 uh, patients. Uh, that had, uh, 72 of them had laparoscopic uh, procedures, 123 had percutaneous cryoablation. Uh, the overall rate of complications was lower with the laparoscopic group, um, but looking at the Clavian uh, surgical uh, complication grading system, the uh, majority of the percutaneously uh, treated masses were grade 1 to 2, uh, being pain, numbness, mild hematoma, uh, hematuria, and uh, bleeding that's just monitored, uh, versus grade 3, so 3 and 4, uh, which the laparoscopic group had, uh, bleeding requiring nephrectomy, renal, renal artery aneurysm, abscess, and leak. Uh, retreatment rates. Um, is always a question with regards to these uh, ablative therapies. Uh, literature uh, consistently quotes reablation rates for cryoablation between 0 and 3.4%. Uh, looking at those masses uh, that are failing, um, uh, USDAO looked at uh, uh, their, uh, uh, their group and found that there was a significant difference between the masses that had contact with the renal uh, sinus uh, versus no contact with uh, those uh, masses that eventually fail or require reablation or another form of treatment. Uh, again, uh, f uh, looking at the um, uh, nephron sparing um, uh, side of, uh, of these treatments, which is so important, um, a, a multi uh, institutional review uh, was done um, and uh, found that there was. Uh, no significant difference uh, between uh, uh, pre-procedure and post-procedural uh, renal function. Uh, again, uh, 62 patients were followed for at least one year. 98.4% um, uh, uh, of the patients had the same uh, estimated GFR pre and post. And also, uh, the uh, this study uh, looked at patients with, with uh, a pre-procedural uh, chronic kidney disease and those with uh, normal healthy kidneys and there was uh, no difference. A uh, quick look at the uh, cost. There's been a, a couple of studies that look, looked at uh, cost for uh, cryoablation uh, comparing uh, uh, the percutaneous method to the laparoscopic to, to the partial nephrectomies and found that there's uh, the cost of percutaneous treatments are uh, 2.2 to 2.7 times less costly uh, when you're looking at um, uh, uh, admit, admission days, laparoscopic fees, anesthetic fees, hospital fees, etc. Uh, several studies have compared uh, with cryoblation um, looking at uh, laparoscopic versus percutaneously. They've uh, found um, uh, no difference uh, in the effic efficacy of treating these masses uh, one way or the other. Uh, a few of the studies that have showed the longest follow-up with regards to uh, cryoablation. Um, uh, Gill's group uh, has the longest follow-up uh, median of eight years. Um, uh, there was 80 patients with a minimum of five years of follow-up. They had five patients with local recurrences, two with local regional uh, recurrences and METs, and four with distant METs, uh, four died of the cancer. Uh, the five and ten year overall survivals were 84 and 51 percent. Uh, Disease-specific survivals, 92 and 83 percent. 
disease-free survivals were 81 and 78 uh, percent. For the next few slides, I'm going to be comparing uh, cryoablation directly to um, uh, radio frequency ablation of the small renal mass. A uh, uh, large uh, meta-analysis was uh, done in 2008 uh, comparing the two modalities uh, with regards to uh, re repeat ablation. Um, uh, cryo had a significantly less uh, number of uh, repeat ablations. Uh, the local tumor progression was also significantly less as well as the uh, metastatic uh, progression of the uh, two forms of treatment. <clears throat> Uh, again, uh, uh, Long's group uh, in 2009 um, uh, had uh, a large number of uh, RFA treated and cryoablation treated uh, tumors, uh, similar tumor size, uh, in the end, uh, similar cancer specific success rates. Uh, follow up was uh, only just under uh, two years, but they did show a high reablation rate of the uh, RFA. Um, uh, this group um, uh, looked at 123 uh, consecutive masses. Uh, unfortunately, none of these are uh, randomized, uh, but uh, they looked at, uh, there was no significant difference between uh, the um, uh, uh, recurrence rate, but uh, did show that uh, a trend was showing towards uh, uh, cryoablation. Uh, so looking at, at these procedures, um, uh, who's doing um, the majority of these procedures? Uh, Long's group uh, uh, looked at this. Uh, Twelve studies were included, 620 uh, small renal masses treated. Uh, with regards to the RFA, 80% uh, of them are being done percutaneously, and cryoablation, a majority of them are being done laparoscopically. Uh, looking at uh, the radiologist versus the urologist, uh, appears that um, uh, significantly more urologists are doing the cryoablation and uh, with the RFA uh, the numbers are a little bit closer together being most of them percutaneous um, but again um, a majority of them are urologists doing the procedure. So quickly I'm going to touch on some of the other uh, um, uh, lesser known uh, minimally invasive treatments. Uh, HIFU, uh, extracorporeal it's focused ultrasound uh, that has uh, temperatures that reach uh, greater than 80 degrees. Uh, it has a narrow ablation zone and obviously has uh, uh, difficulty with targeting. targeting. Uh, there have been several phase two trials that have uh, been performed uh, but uh, have led to unsatisfactory results. Uh, some of the main issues are the respiratory movements of the kidney, uh, interphase between the transducer and the target, uh, being the uh, muscle and the ribs. Uh, the machine is quite similar to the ESWL machine. Uh, Rich's group has, does have a uh, three-year follow-up. Um, Seventeen patients were initially uh, began the trial. Um, uh, five out of those 17 event eventually had uh, surgery or uh, RFA. Uh, Two-thirds of these patients have remained on the HIFU uh, treatment protocol. There has been uh, documentation of uh, tumor shrinkage uh, being 30% in those who did respond. Uh, the laparoscopic approach is being explored for HIFU. Uh, uh, radio surgery, uh, the cyber knife, uh, is being investigated uh, due to the success of uh, treating RCC brain mets. Uh, they've uh, enabled a synchrony program that is used to monitor for uh, to make up for the uh, motion related with uh, the resp respiratory artifact. Uh, treatments are usually split up into three to four uh, fractions. Uh, uh, Hong et al. have treated uh, 14 patients, uh, fairly large tumor size, 4.1 centimeters. Um, uh, CT scans are performed at uh, uh, every three months, and there has been uh, shown uh, tumor aggression at 44 a percent of these in the uh, state, no recurrences at one year. Um, microwave therapy um, is uh, also being investigated. Form of energy delivered through antenna uh, placed directly into the tumor. 
electromagnetic field generates rapid ion uh, oscillation and produces frictional heat. This is done per, uh, laparoscopically or percutaneously. Uh, Liang's group um, uh, demonstrated a, a, a trial in which 12 tumors uh, were treated, the median fall off 11 months, and at time of print there was no radiological recurrences. Um, also out there there's uh, the laser interstitial thermal therapy as well as pulsed uh, cavitational ultrasound uh, which uh, um, have uh, no uh, current trials to discuss. So I'm going to uh, now focus on uh, cryoablation versus uh, partial nephrectomy. Um, uh, Gill's group, um, there's only uh, three main studies that are comparing these two um, uh, procedures. Uh, Gill's group uh, had 231 consecutive patients treated for small renal masses. 153 of, these, 153 of these were with partial nephrectomy and 78 uh, cryoablation. The uh, partial nephrectomy group is younger, tumor size is slightly larger. Um, with regards to recurrences, um, there was one in the elapsed partial nephrectomy and uh, two in the cryoablative group. Uh, there were three um, uh, non-cancer related deaths in the laparoscopic in the cryoblative therapy group and none in the partial nephrectomy group. Uh, follow -up was, uh, mean follow-up was 24 months. Uh, looking at the complications specific to these procedures, um, there was a, a higher number of complications uh, with the laparoscopic partial nephrectomy group, uh, which is uh, uh, to be expected. Uh, the, the partial infection groups, the patients are younger, uh, healthier, had better kidney function, and had uh, uh, larger tumors. Uh, in this study, the decision on the form of treatment was done by the surgeon. Uh, O'Malley's group um, uh, presented uh, 30 patients uh, treated uh, each with uh, cryoblation and partial nephrectomy. These were matched for age, renal function comorbidities and uh, tumor size and tumor locations. It is a, a short follow-up with similar oncologic outcomes. Uh, no recurrences were detected. Uh, follow-up was performed via CT scan. Uh, none of these lesions were re-biopsied. Uh, Lynn's group um, with Gill uh, looked at uh, multiple uh, ipsilateral tumors and uh, treating them with uh, partial nephrectomy or cryoablation. Uh, the partial nephrectomy group had 14 patients with 28 masses. Cryoablation group had 13 patients with 31 masses. Uh, the, in the uh, patient demographics, uh, the only significant difference was that the uh, partial nephrectomy group was younger. Um, the uh, number of complications between the two procedures was not significant. Uh, there was a short of hospital stay for the cryoablative group. Uh, median follow-up 38.5 months. The overall and cancer-specific survivals, 100% you know, for the partial nephrectomy group and uh, 92 and 89% respectively uh, for the cryoblation. Um, a uh, recent uh, meta-analysis and review by Kunkel uh, reviewed 99 uh, studies. Over 6,000 lesions were analyzed. Uh, there was significant differences uh, detected amongst um, modalities, amongst the treatment modalities for age, tumor size, and follow-up duration. Uh, in the end, um, uh, the uh, partial nephrectomy was superior to ablation and surveillance. Uh, looking at age, uh, the partial nephrectomy groups were younger, uh, the tumor size larger, a patient follow-up, uh, the partial nephrectomies had longer follow-up. Uh, looking at uh, local recurrence and uh, metastatic disease, uh, cryoablation and RFA had a uh, relative risk of 7.45 and 18.23 when compared to uh, partial uh, nephrectomy. Uh, now in this uh, meta-analysis, uh, mean age and follow-up were not associated with local recurrences on multivariate analysis. Uh, the uh, tumor size was associated with uh, local recurrences. 
Uh, there was no significant difference amongst uh, the treatment modalities with regards to metastatic disease. The only significant uh, uh, indicator was uh, tumor size. Uh, a quick look as, uh, and summary of the meta-analysis performed by the AUA in 2009, uh, focusing on comparing uh, cryo, uh, RFA, and partial nephrectomy. 114 uh, articles um, uh, were in, uh, met the inclusion criteria. Uh, again, a focus on tumor size, total and local recurrence, uh, metastatic recurrence, cancer-specific survival, and overall survival. Uh, tumor size, they're all relatively uh, the same, uh, 2.6, 2.7, 2.6. Um, in this uh, large meta-analysis, um, uh, follow-up, uh, RFA did have a slightly longer um, uh, follow-up. Uh, Recurrence-free uh, survival, uh, the cryo had survival rate 87.6, RFA was low, uh, lowest at 85.2, and the partial infrequent group 98.3. Uh, local uh, recurrence uh, free survival, again partial nephrectomy uh, uh, 98.4 and RFA uh, being lowest at 87. Uh, looking at uh, uh, metastatic uh, recurrence free survival, uh, these, all these numbers were relatively high, uh, highest being uh, the uh, laparoscopic partial nephrectomy group uh, 98.8 and cancer-free uh, specific survival, um, uh, 98.8. Uh, RFA did have a higher uh, than cryo, uh, 98.1. Uh, overall survival, uh, the uh, laparoscopic partial nephrotic group again was the highest compared to cryo and RFA. So a quick look at the um, uh, treatment algorithm uh, presented by uh, Gill's group, it was just recently published in the New England uh, uh, Journal of Medicine, uh, looking at uh, single sporadic renal masses. Um, they uh, state not definitely uh, benign according to imaging studies. Uh, basically looking at uh, the first decision tree being a relatively uh, young patient, uh, less than 70, versus the el elderly patient, greater than 70, and then looking at uh, medical uh, comorbidities, um, uh, no major uh, coexisting conditions versus coexisting uh, conditions, looking at life expectancy and looking at uh, surgical risk. Um, options are to be discussed with the patient uh, for the uh, younger and healthier group. Uh, obviously, a preferred option is um, uh, surgery, and the uh, older unwell group uh, talk about uh, possibly biopsy. Uh, possible uh, active surveillance and considering uh, thermal ablation. And then uh, the surgery group, uh, partial nephrectomy, um, uh, if uh, technically feasible, and uh, obviously preferably uh, uh, laparoscopic if, um, uh, if able to uh, surgically. So in summary, uh, we, we all know that the uh, incidence is rising uh, for the small renal masses. The options uh, for minimally invasive treatments are expanding. Uh, partial nephrectomy uh, remains the gold standard for nephron sparing surgery. Uh, Long-term oncologic follow-up is still uh, required. Uh, Cryoblation does demonstrate longer follow-up and more durable uh, results versus RFA. Um, ablative therapies uh, may be appropriate in certain uh, patient populations. Thank you very much. Um, looking at the, uh, back to our first slide, partial nephrectomy representing the Edmonton Oilers, cryo has some promise, uh, the Canucks, and so forth. Oh, the, the Toronto Maple Leafs are supposed to be active surveillance. It didn't show up. Thank you.